Hey, this weekend, I mentioned Division Three with University of Mary Hart and Baylor and that amazing run of Pete Fredenberg during the quarterfinals at Wisconsin Whitewater. In the FCS Championship, which was also played, remember, earlier in the year, and Sam Houston State won it all. And we were a part of that with uh, a couple of players that uh, played at Baylor that were a part of that offensive line. Sam Houston State in the quarterfinals as they play Montana State. I believe that's the quarterfinal. They play Montana State. That game is in Huntsville tomorrow night, and it's on ESPN+. Plus. So good for them. East Tennessee State, North Dakota State. Here come the Bison again. South Dakota State, Villanova. And then tonight, Montana and James Madison play on ESPN2. That's some really good football at that level with some of those teams playing and beating even teams who are so-called FBS teams. I, I, I wish the uh, the FCS wouldn't keep a secret how they figured out this whole playoff thing. Clearly, that they've been doing it for years when the big boys call. So we can't tell you that. Yeah, you it's had like team, the, guess what? It's, you like, had, it's like the recipe for Coke. You had you had teams that did not win their conferences. My alma mater, Stephen F. Austin with Kobe Carthel, got an at-large berth. And there's probably teams that didn't get an at-large berth that should have. Craig, I think you mentioned in Division Three was it Harden Simmons that got left out mm -hmm. that was so damn good. And they got left out. But at least some did get in. That doesn't mean you're always going to have everyone agree. One of the things about the NCAA men's basketball tournament, 68 teams, there's play-in games. They figured that out. The teams on the bubble, okay, let's add four more or eight more teams. And, and, and there's always still going to be, well, how about they pretty much have ended it. Now, you can't do that in football. That would be impossible. But why not at least try to close some of the gaps and the loopholes and, um, and, and, and give people an opportunity before well, the season begins? I'm looking at their playoffs, and it's pretty much gone chalk as, as you, know, you would kind of expect it to. But uh, there is a game between number five seeded Villanova and at large South Dakota State. At large South Dakota State beat at large UC Davis, and they also beat the four seed Sacramento State in a five point game. But I was told by people expanded playoffs, we're just going to get the same result. The big teams will always win. What, how, how did South Dakota State win this game? How did, how did they get. Oh, they had a freaking opportunity to. Wow. Upsets can happen. This whole, like, it's just Alabama's just going to beat everybody, and Georgia's – oh, yeah, Georgia, I saw them getting their asses kicked last week. Now, granted, it was by Alabama, but guess what? Based on what I saw, I'm not so sure that if you throw them in the playoff and at least give some other teams an opportunity, they can't do something similar. But we can't find out because it would be too watered down. Too many teams – like, this argument is so stupid. This argument about it having to be four or – only eight. It's going to water it down. It's going to ruin the regulars. No, it's not. It's not going to do any of those things. It's going to make it more interesting. Why you would not want more college football? Why you would not want to see Utah right now in the playoff against a Georgia? I would love to see that game, but we can't. Well, because Georgia would automatically win based on what I hear as an argument is that the big teams would always win. It's stupid. But you know what? South Dakota State got an opportunity. They won two games. Uh, one, they weren't supposed to. And now, you know, let's see what they do against number five, Villanova. But at least they got the opportunity to do it. If Alabama destroys Cincinnati, and okay, if they do, here are the semifinal scores since it all began. Yeah. Paul, I hate to say it. Oregon, 59-20 to 20 over Florida State defending national champion. 59-20. Oh, it was 58-22. It, it was great elite Final Four close games. Clemson 37, Oklahoma 17. Alabama oh, 38, Michigan State nothing. Clemson 31, Ohio State nothing. Alabama beat Clemson 24-6. Clemson beat Notre Dame 30-3. LSU beat Oklahoma 63-28. And last year, Alabama beat Notre Dame 31-14, to 49-28 Ohio State and Clemson. So basically, 90% of the games have been blowouts like in the it, yeah. playoffs. Yeah. But we're worried about blowouts. We're worried about since he can't hang with Bama. But meanwhile, Bama's beaten Blue Bloods by 39 points in the, in the playoff. That, that argument Alabama is so Alabama beat Ohio man. State 52-24 in the championship game. Explain LSU it. hammered Clemson 42-25. And Clemson was really good after coming off the national championship game in which they beat Alabama by 28. You mean to tell me watching like OU LSU the other like a couple years back didn't tell you that like well I mean we might as well have been a Cincinnati getting beat the same way Oklahoma was getting beaten and and that LSU team guess what they were going to do that to everybody sometimes that just happens and you have that team but yeah I, I just think it's silly I think I think the whole 
uh, argument of like, well, there's too many teams and there won't be enough good. What good games are we getting? Like you just listed off 75% of the playoff is blowouts. So what classics are we getting every time the playoff rolls out this year or rolls out every year? We're not anyway. So why would we not at least say, okay, we'll add a couple more weeks and hey, it still might be Alabama winning by 39, but at least Cincinnati got the opportunity. It may be Georgia winning by 24, but at least SMU got an opportunity because they won 11 games and they, you know, and I'm, I'm just throwing that out there randomly. SMU hasn't won in 11 games, but you know what I'm saying. What's the difference? What's the difference? There's no difference. There's no difference whatsoever, but for whatever reason, we can't let these teams in. Now, granted, we're moving towards where that's going to change, and good. It needs to. It's dumb to make it so exclusive. I know you want to make it feel elite or whatever, but it doesn't even feel elite because not everybody even has a chance to claim that they're elite. That's where I sit on it. Yeah. I, uh, again, that's why I responded to Kirk, Herx, Kirk Herbstreet and his little sarcastic, uh, out of nowhere, uh, let's make sure he sucks up to the college football playoff because was Cincinnati weird. got in. That was so random. And, and by the way, if Alabama wins 50 to 20, then I'm sure he'll come back with a tweet that said, I told you. Well, your team got your ass kicked a couple of times, too, along the way. Yeah. Uh, from Barry oh, Jackson. Go how ahead. About, how about, I mean, Ohio State was very fortunate to get in the first year. There was an argument to be made they shouldn't have got in. What they going to do? They won the whole dadgum thing, mm -hmm. and they were this close to not even getting in. So, you know what? I mean, they got very fortunate in that. But there is because of a 14 playoff, there was a chance Ohio State would have gotten left out. Mm -hmm. And they were the, clearly the best team when all was said and done. And that's the thing is, like, who's been left out that maybe was the best team and we just never got to see it because, well, no, we got Maybe TCU it. or Baylor in 14. TCU and Baylor in 14 could have gone in there and shaken mm. some stuff and up, here's I somebody swear. Said, well, yeah, but Ohio have. State won the national title, and so it's hard to argue. But if they were fourth and won the national title and they were red hot at the end of the year, well, maybe TCU could have done that. Absolutely. Or maybe even Baylor. Now, from Barry.